Well, hi, I'm Jeff Strong. I'm creator of the Auditory Brain Stimulation Therapy Rhythmic and Trimmings Intervention. I'm also co-founder and creative director of BrainShiftRadio.com. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about um, how I practice. I get a lot of people who email or call. A lot of our students ask me whether I still practice. Um, and if I do, what do I do? So yes, I still practice um, <clears throat> several hours a day. Uh, I've been playing over 40 years, but I still have to work on my technique. It's still something that deteriorates over time if you're not using it. And I'm always trying to push the things I'm doing. And by cons consistently practicing and deliberately practicing very specific skills, I'm always pushing my abilities and I'm always able to play a little bit better. So um, I won't play every drum that I have or every style of drum that I have uh, and practice it deliberately every day. I, I can't do that. I'll choose a drum or a style <clears throat> and, and kind of cycle through. I will do two things each day. One is a drum, a hand drum of some sort, whether it's this, uh, this gonga here or maybe a frame drum like this. And then otherwise sticks, um, your standard, you know, drum sticks. I'll play, I'll play my snare drum, uh, rudiments. Uh, I'll play my drum kit. I will do, do exercises for, for coordination. Um, I'll also push the envelope a little bit with my technique on sticks and use, you know, maybe a mallet like this or, or a bigger one like that, or maybe even these uh, large Tyco sticks. Um, it forces me to have to develop different muscles and uh, just helps develop my technique in general. So, um, you know, I'll do rudiments, for inst instance, with these huge sticks on a large Tyco drum or maybe even the Serto here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm always doing every day I do some sticks and I do some hand techniques. Um, and they're both doing basically the same stuff. Um, and really it's the basic rudiments that's, that I start with. And um, so uh, like on this drum, for instance, uh, you, you've got your basic strokes on this drum. You've got open tones. You've got the, 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 the edge tone, which is, is kind of, this would be this open tone here. That's really bass tone, it's doom. Then you've got your tech and talk, which are on the edge. Then you've got your slaps. And so I'll go through cycles of playing those. I will do combinations. I'll go very slowly. Um, and I'll use rudiments to do them. So for instance, um, one of the first things I start with is I'll just do single stroke rolls and I'll trade back and forth between, uh, on this drum, I'll trade back and forth between the tech and the talk and uh, the dooms. And I'll just play 16th notes um, slowly. So four notes of each. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. looking for is just to create as comfortable a tone as I can, a consistent tone from, from one hand to the other, um, not feeling like I'm getting, getting um, kind of stuck in my, in my stroke. It needs to be fluid. They need to be even. I start out really slowly because oftentimes playing slower is more difficult than playing fast. Uh, there's a sweet spot that we all hit that's really comfortable. <clears throat> that doesn't require a lot of thought. And it may not be the, it may not be the most perfect stroke, but it's going by quick enough that, that you can be kind of sloppy and it's okay. Um, if you're playing really slowly, you, you can't be as sloppy. Every, every tone, every stroke that you make is obvious because there's, there's space between. So if I'm playing really slowly, playing these, um, these tech and talk, if I, have a, if I have a bad note, you're gonna hear it. I'm gonna feel it. It's also harder to play slow. Um, because you're, you're in a place where you're having to think about each note that you're doing. You're also having to in some way contemplate the space in between. So um, <clears throat> when I practice, deliberately practice each day, I start off very slow. So I'll do that for a while. I'll speed up a little bit, kind of get to a more comfortable place. I'll 
I'll set the metronome at different tempos, play with the metronome. I'll put on a radio and I'll play to the songs that are on the radio. One thing cool about choosing the radio is that um, the tempos are always changing. So you don't get to choose what you're doing. You have to play within the context of the song. Sometimes the song's so fast I can't play 16th notes. Maybe I'll play 8th notes. A uh, song, song is in a triplet feel. I'll be forced to play triplets. It's a good way of kind of randomly uh, trying different things and, and practicing different things. But the idea is that you're working on your basic strokes. So you've got your single stroke. Just kind of cycle through the three different strokes. I'll do different volumes. play around with that. Um, it's harder to play quiet than it is loud, um, <clears throat> so it's harder to play slow. And then I'll do open, close, open, where I'll, I'll start very slow. And I'll generally stick with one one stroke maybe, but maybe I'll keep, continue to do this. You know, start slow. again um, you know I'll generally that slow to fast to slow I will I will probably take five or ten minutes to do I'll stay at the, the, the edge of my my fastest ability and then and then as I start making mistakes I'll slow it down just a hair until I'm not making mistakes again then I'll push it again to the point where I'm making mistakes and I'll notice over time that that, that point where I start making mistakes or get kind of um, tense will progressively get faster and faster. So I do that with the single strokes. I also do double stroke rolls. So I'll do double stroke rolls, right, right, left, left. Same idea, fast, slow, start off slow, get really comfortable, different volumes. I'll do paradiddles. That's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Great way to do that is do doom on the on the, the downbeats. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right. I'll do, uh, I'll do flams. On this type of drum, I'll also work on, on some trills. Do them two ways. I will do uh, three strokes on the right hand or two strokes on the right hand, depending because um, I'll put those into performances depending on what kind of feel I want. Putting three strokes on the right hand essentially turns a 16th note into a 32nd note. Putting two strokes on the right hand turns a 16th note into a 16th note triplet. Very different feels. Uh, using the three on the one hand is basically doubling the tempo. So if I'm trying to to influence the brain, sometimes I'm better off doubling the tempo because I'm going from 12 beats per, or, well, I won't go that fast. I'm going from 10 beats to, per second to 20 beats per second, for instance. By doing a 16th note triplet, I'm not quite doubling it, which means it musically may be more interesting to listen to because it, it throws it off just a little bit. It's not just doubling, but it doesn't do the same thing to the brain as far as entrainment goes. So um, I work on both of these. Same thing again, slow. So in this case, the, the, uh, the three, three strokes on the right hand trill is, um, it starts with the ring finger, middle finger, index finger, and then uh, either the, the ring finger or the middle finger um, on the left hand, depending on where I'm doing the trill. 
I often tend to do them on the edge of the drum. Um, I can just do the trill with one hand if I want to. And that's fine too. Um, and that's just a three. And I may practice that a little bit, go really slow. And I want them all to be the same, the same sound, the same volume. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll accent the first one just for fun. But the idea here is to get to the point if you're going to play them fast, that it's just a roll. But I'll start off really slow. Here's uh, the full trill with the left hand involved. So again, really slow. Painfully slow. It's a triplet one. The, the, the four stroke one again. Again, slow. The slower, the better, because it forces you to have to think about what you're doing. It forces you to develop coordination. Um, you know, there's a phrase we use around here a lot, speed before balance. Um, and that may work on a bicycle sometimes or a motorcycle, but um, it doesn't work with drumming. The slower you can go, the better you're going to be ultimately. If you can get it up to a, a, a fairly decent fast tempo, now you're talking. Now your, 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 your strokes are solid. Your technique is solid. Your rhythms are going to be smoother. Um, so if you can play it slow, that's what you want. You want perfection at a slow speed before you start going fast. Because if you, you develop imperfection at a quicker speed, um, it's just going to be a mess someday. Um, you're going to start thinking about it, and then all of a sudden it's going to fall apart on you. I recommend that everybody start with a new rhythm, really, really slow, very deliberate strokes, understanding the space between those notes so that um, you have time to really integrate that rhythm into your mind, into your body. Um, and then as you speed it up and you disengage that, that thought process of what comes next, you get to that point of fluidity. It, it's, it's solid because you've got that solid foundation. If you start off at a medium tempo, it's not going to be necessarily solid. Um, and I say that even for advanced players. I practice everything really slow to really begin with. If I'm learning a new rhythm, say say I play something and I'm improvising, and, and I play a lot of videos where I'm doing you know something at seven or eight or nine beats per second, and a lot of what I play when I'm doing a meditation is is an improv improvisation, and I may notice something I play that I really like, and I want to go back and be able to recreate that. And then this is how we created the REI rhythms, by the way. I'd play for somebody, I'd morph the rhythms, I'd watch for responses, and then. Um, I would transcribe what I, what I played because I recorded everything. I transcribe what I played, then I'd slow it way down and practice it deliberately to really ingrain that rhythm, that pattern into my mind. Force myself to have to contemplate the space between each of those notes so that when I played it at a regular tempo, there was no tripping up. I knew the rhythm. I, I had it, the foundation was solid. I, I had embodied the different patterns and I could, I could pull it out of... Uh, you know, pull it out of just the middle of nowhere as I'm playing along with other stuff, and it's gonna it's gonna work the way it's supposed to. I'm gonna play it the way I'm supposed to, and that is from taking it down to the slowest tempo I could play, really super duper slow, painfully slow, so slow that you can feel the space between those notes, that you have to think about what comes next. That's slow. So there you have it. So pick up your drum every day and. Um, just work on your drills, go slow, develop your technique, and um, you'll get better, a little bit better every day. So I'll see you in the next video.